Our God in heaven, we're so grateful we can come before you. We thank you for the beautiful weather. Uh, Father, we thank you for uh, the fact that uh, we, are, we can gather in this format. Father, it's, we know that it's not a, a, the best format, at least for us right now. Uh, but Father, this certainly in this day and age of technology, we enjoy the fact that we can even see each other. We can talk with each other. We can connect with each other. And ultimately, Father, grow. Uh, in our relationship with you. We're grateful for Jesus. We're grateful for your word that is a lamp unto our feet. I pray, Father, that we uh, continue to unveil things that only uh, cement who you are and the wisdom that you have, especially in this area and how we process things. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, 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 one of the things that we mentioned the last time in order for us to talk about mental health is that to have a great sense of purpose. Here's one of the great things about the scriptures. You know, sometimes what we do, we think, hey, um, how come there are Christians who don't seem to be or not as fulfilled or people who are following Christ, those who are not Christians, seem to have it together, right? I mean, it's like, uh, here's sometimes what happened. Man, I'm struggling so much. I'm, I'm, I'm holding on to the scriptures. And uh, it appears to me that their people, my neighbors, my family, whatever, they, they, they don't seem to hold as stringently to the scriptures, and yet they seem to be prospering. What is going on? Uh, I hear some people erroneously have said, hey, only good, only Christians can have good marriages. That's not true. Or only Christians can really understand, can flourish when we love. That's not really true. Because I'll tell you some, some reasons why. That the principles of God are simply universal truths. And they will apply in almost every situation. And, and, and the idea is selflessness is a universal truth. Where, and, and therefore, there's fulfillment in selflessness. That's what Jesus teaches. If you save your life, you are going to lose it. If you try to hold on to your life, you give it away, you will actually gain it. That's a universal truth. Love is a universal truth. The power of love is a universal truth. And so the idea is, it doesn't always have to be under the umbrella of Christianity. It's universal truth applied. And so it's really important for us to understand that's what the scripture does for me. And one of the fantastic things is science only continues to do things, be it Behavioral science, be it medical science, be it, uh, 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 you know, different kinds of science, only its discoveries only confirms what's written in the scriptures. It's the same in regard to mental health. And so the first thing that we talked about in order for us to have strong mental health, for us to process things right, are people who have a great sense of purpose. I mean, just a remarkable that I get up, that there is a purpose to my life and what I'm doing really matters. I'm gonna really make a difference with what I'm doing. Undoubtedly, companies that are remarkably uh, successful are ones that actually have a deep sense of purpose. Their employees are happy when they have a deep sense of purpose. Now, it is inarguable that there are some people's purpose that are so trivial, yet they hold on to that purpose. But that's the power of having a purpose. It's not necessarily a power in the material, it's the power of the principle of having a great sense of purpose. And that's when, when God calls us, when, he, when Jesus called the disciples, he didn't call them merely, hey, come follow me and I'm gonna give you eternal life. Come follow you, and I will give you a purpose. 
that there is going to be a reason why you get up in the morning. One of the greatest challenges I had when I took a hiatus from the ministry for about five years is that it was remarkable how there was a sense of emptiness in what I was doing. For the first year, it was hard to find it, diff it was hard to find it motivating to work. It actually affected how affected I, uh, effective I was. It wasn't my competency to work the job. It was actually my sense of, is this what life is all about? Then I saw other people around me that really got up their motivation. They had a real sense of purpose. Then I changed jobs. I was into, both jobs were sales. One was selling online advertising. Basically, that's a, that's a long and short of it. But they tried to repurpose that job to talk about we're helping small and medium-sized businesses. And truthfully, you can. But its goal was not that we're salespeople. As a matter of fact, we call ourselves media consultants. And the idea is, is to create a sense of purpose so that you can get up. It's got to be beyond selling online advertising. When I was, then I went into the same thing with, with uh, sales in roofing. A lot more successful, especially after the first year uh, in online advertising, it was, it was very successful. But I say that to say, I think it's really important that we understand this principle. That the Bible says when God rescues us, he calls us to be a blessing to others. There's principles of that throughout. He says he were created in Christ Jesus in Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. We're creating him to do good works. When the disciples were called and he issues that purpose for us, that great eternal purpose. And the truth is, I became a better student when I understood God's purpose for me. When I understood that I was not at going to school to simply to get a degree. That was not why I was there. I was there to help people to understand who Jesus is now. That did not make me less motivated to do well in school and if not not to and the truth is there were times in our ministry where that became the case that people had such a sense of purpose of why god why they were called that there are people who were lax in their education we have to teach principles on what the bible teaches about the fact that no you need to do well at school to be a good example so i said it all to say is to emphasize the fact that a sense of purpose, almost any purpose, let's start there, is the way for us to have good mental health. All right. So you'll find we'll do some repetition for us to be able to uh, help us understand this. The second thing that we want to talk about here this morning is the idea of having strong relationships. Strong relationship. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we read about this concept of strong relationships. It says in uh, verse um, 15, but if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. 
On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, given, giving greater parts, greater honor to the parts that lack it, so that there should be no division in the body, and that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. And so the Bible talks about this concept, and it, it is absolutely saturated with this idea, strong, connected relationships. As a matter of fact, it uses the metaphor of the human body, of how our relationships in the church needs to be. It's this idea that it is so connected that we are, we, it has to be strong. I mean, if I only have a strong lower body and I'm just taking care of my, my lower body, but I'm not taking care of my, of my upper body, it will look weird and it doesn't simply function in that way. Not only about looks, but it will not function properly. Strong relationships. As a matter of fact, Jesus says in John 15, he says this, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. We see Jesus' relationship understands the, the depth and the kind of intimacy he needed to get. After he calls them, he spends some time with them. He says, guys, we are no longer teacher and student, master and servant. We're actually now friends. For a servant does not know his master's business. Jesus talks about this concept in John chapter 13. He says, relationships ought to be so strong between people that it is the model on which we actually propagate the gospel. He says, by your love, one for another, all men will know that you're my disciples. As a matter of fact, we use that as a point to help people to understand. It's not doctrine that will help people to understand what, uh, uh, who God is while that's important. It's actually our relationships, our connection to each other. Paul writes to the book in Thessalonians and he said to the church, uh, to the church of Thessalonica and he says this, he says, what is my glory? What is my crown? Is it not you? And he says, all that I strive for is relationships. It's you. It's our connection with each other. You know, it has absolutely been proven. You have people who are touched and hugged, grew up much more emotionally and mentally healthy than people who are alone and by themselves. That there is a dictate, if you would, from the scriptures that talks about having great relationships. As a matter of fact, for Melanie and I, when we made a decision to move to San Antonio from Boston, one of the biggest things, we were considering four cities, Jacksonville, Florida, Los Angeles, California, Dallas, Texas, and San Antonio, Texas. I know what the unspiritual among you are thinking. Those are all warm, warm cities. They didn't want to stay in the cold. Well, the, the truth is that actually was part of our reason. We wanted to be in the warm. But all four of those cities, why we were thinking and considering those cities were a couple of reasons. One, is there a church there? Two, who do we know in those churches? Jacksonville, the Robins as in James and Kelly. In Dallas, the Mancini's and Mark and Connie. In San Antonio, Dave and Beth. 
Park, the people that we developed the great relationships with in Chicago. And in Los Angeles, Ron and Cheryl Hammer, among many others, people that, uh, that uh, uh, we had great relationship with. It, it was not a good, wow, wouldn't it be nice? No, it was determining whether or not we were going to move to that city. Because we understand, without a doubt, that was going to be the case. Honestly, it was a big decision, and it was a big cost that we had to count because we knew some people in Ottawa, but not as well. And one of the things coming here was how well was, were we going to be connected? Not necessarily how great is the city and all that kind of stuff. That's secondary. Honestly, all cities boil down to the same things. It's the people. It's the relationships. Strong relationships lead to great mental health. They talk about this all the time. People without fathers or a good father and a good father figure grew up with a lack of confidence. A lot of times suffer from self-esteem. That's not one thing that they suffer from insecurity. That's not just a couple of people. That is across the board. You have abusive parents and you watch children grow up and you look at them and, and you realize, man, these people are so accomplished, yet they are a lot of times on the inside. It is absolutely empty and there. there's a yearning. There's a yearning for these kinds of things. Because we see the principle of work, which is strong relationships. When we don't have strong relationship, it leads to the way we express ourselves. And sometimes we have difficulty understanding. That's why understanding these principles found in God's word is not a revelation. You don't have to be an incredible psychologist, but actually just putting into the practice these kinds of principles. I mean, it's so great that we can be on the phone and talk in this day and age. I cannot imagine if we had a pandemic and we couldn't, we didn't have the phone, how difficult it would be. And one of the things is that there are so many people right now that are not as, that are disobeying the principles of social distancing or physical distancing, depending on what, what you, how you want to call it. Why? People yearn for relationships. People yearn for relationships. One of the most popular shows in the, in the 80s, out of the early 90s, too, was the show Cheers. And the idea of that show was that people would come to a bar called Cheers and they'll get connected and they'll feel connected. So that was the strength of the relationship. The idea is that I'm not endorsing that that's where we find relationship. The idea of principle of re strong relationship, what it can do. You look at the show Friends. Why did it work so much? If these people that were neighbors and they were childhood friends and they got connected. How much more so is if we as disciples see the need for this and make it a priority in our lives? God talks about this principle and how we ought to be with one another. And I really want you to think about how connected are you staying during this time? And I'm telling you, there are people that's going to come out of this time 
healthy, healthier than others. Those who have a great sense of purpose, that I'm not just locked, locked in this, this place. The people who have a great sense of relationship. I mean, when I'm done here, I'm going to be calling one of the brothers of one of the churches he wanted to talk. And the truth is, I've been on the phone enormously more. I actually have been busier in this time than when I've not, uh, 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 when we've not had this pandemic. It's a very interesting dynamic. And I know one of the things that I wanted to do is to have a great sense of purpose. I'm learning, I am taking a French course, doing at least an hour and a half to two hours a day. There are things that I'm making sure that I'm doing. That there's a sense of purpose that I'm not just locked in here. Beyond that there is a still connection. And as a matter of fact, in some areas, here's the exciting things. My relationships, especially with the churches outside of Ottawa, has gotten stronger in the fact that we have more time to be able to talk and plan and discuss. And I want to encourage you to really make sure that your relationships are incredibly woven together. And one of the ways that we're going to come out of this, and not only come out of this, that we're going to be processing things better. It's the idea of having connected, strong relationships, a strong sense of purpose, and a strong relationship base. This is not a time to hide out. This is not a time. It's a time for us to really, really, really even deepen our relationships and get creative and not lazy and not well, when this is all over. The truth is, we don't know when this is going to be all over. And we are going to struggle if we don't find ways to have a great sense of purpose and to deepen and even strengthen and see the value. It's the principle found in the scriptures. It's nothing new. But I'm glad we can categorize it. And so this morning, Let's think about, let, let's think about this. That every single day, the Bible says, encourage one another daily. That there's not a day that goes by that don't you, you don't speak to another disciple. And you call them for whatever reason. I want to challenge, especially those that are by themselves. I can't imagine what a challenge that that would be. I want you to know there are people, reach out. Reach out. Depression and suicide is going up at this point in time. Domestic violence. Let's make sure we apply some principles found in the scriptures through our practicing of our faith, the discipline of our faith in terms of relationships, and in terms of purpose. These things just overall are universal truths. Practice within the prism and through the filter of Christianity makes it even more powerful. Makes it even more powerful. Anyways, we'll see you guys tonight at 7 o'clock. Uh, thought for the day that, uh, that we understand the need for deep, purposeful relationships. Awesome.